So, Luke, since we last spoke, we've had a nil-nil draw at Barnet. How, before we get into the FA Cup stuff, how has the rest and recovery gone of everyone since the Barnet game? Yeah, listen, Day Stevens come back from isolation. Will Evans back from suspension. Kane Smith back from his niggle. Um, and like I said to loads of people already in, in the prep lead up for this, that we've finally gone into the, to the week fully loaded. We've got all the bodies available. We leave the building today, 12 o'clock, the players have left. And as it stands, everyone's available. What does that look like come 1.30 tomorrow when the players have to report? I wish I could tell you I don't have a, a magic ball. We've got to take day by day. And that's saying that I'm fortunate for us, but that is how it is with the current climate. I'm not sure if you know this, but following the Barnet game, Oren would now have a clean sheet percentage in the league of 58%. Manchester City have a clean sheet percentage of 57%. means that across the top five leagues in England, we have the best clean sheet record in the whole of England. How happy are you to have the best defensive record in the country? Uh, some of my close friends call me Pep Garrard. And that's not even banter, being totally serious. So maybe he needs to be called... I don't know, Luke Guardiola or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, listen, it's been amazing. Considering we lost our number one in October at Chesterfield and he had already recorded, I think it was four or five clean sheets. To then go and get Tay Ashby Hammond in the building and to continue that is fantastic. That stat's brilliant. It'll go on my social media in, in, in any time soon. To have 58% clean sheet record is brilliant. Um, we've yet to concede in the FA Cup, which again is fantastic. We've gone away from home to Barnet. We've played Eastleigh here and St Albans here. We've scored seven goals and not conceded one. That stands us in good stead. We've not lost a game at home all season. I think it's 11 games, eight wins, three draws. I think there's been seven, eight community sheets at home. So everything that eludes to hopefully a positive day tomorrow, but I'm, I'm long in the tooth now. I understand what it takes. The form guide goes out the window. The form goes out the window. All the stats go out the window. It's an FA Cup game. It's 11 v 11, come 3 p.m. And it's the best team wins it on the day. It's that simple. I just want to touch on our FA Cup run so far. We've played in the fourth qualifying round against local rivals Barnet. First actual round against league rivals Eastleigh. Second round against neighbours St Albans and your old manager, Ian Allenson. And now we're returning. Now you're returning to play against old team AFC Wimbledon. It's had a very nice storyline to our FA Cup run so far with 1-0s, 2-0s and 4-0s. What can the Wood Army and neutrals expect from the game tomorrow? You could probably write a, a film on this. A Barnet boy playing against Barnet in fourth qualifying round, taking 700 unbelievable fans. Eastley's Eastley. To play them against a team that is situated in the same division as you, it's, it's hard. It's ones you look at and go we would have preferred a better draw. We were fortunate enough to beat them 2-0. For us to go and beat St Albans 4-0, you can see there was, not anxious, because I believed in the group. I went and watched them live, and I said to the group, we'll beat these and we'll beat them heavy. And it's on record now. I've spoken to three or four of my mates and I told them the scoreline. I honestly believed we were going to thump them 4-0. The fact that we'd done that and created history again to be in the third round is fantastic. But... To play against AFC Wimbledon is great. I keep saying it. I'm like a broken record. I adore the place. I love AFC for what they've done for me, the career I had there. I've got some great memories. But, yeah, it's about creating your own memories. There's not many highs in football, Mike. There's a lot more lows than there is highs. I've experienced that probably my fair share of highs as a manager in, in seven years. But I think that could be topped on Saturday. I genuinely believe if we go and do the business... I think that could be my best ever memory at this football club. And we know the job in hand. We know exactly what's going to be asked of us, where we have to be good and what we need to do in terms of ensure we're better than AFC Wimbledon because they're a very, very good team. They're two leagues of buds for a reason. He's a very good manager. But like I said, if we get it right, we could be creating history again as a group of men. We are just the second non-league team to ever make back-to-back -back third rounds. What does it mean to the club and the chairman 
to be in this situation and be in the third round this time with fans in attendance. Huge. Obviously, the journey last year was unfortunate. We played Wimborne here, South End here, Canvey away, and then Millwall here, and not one person in the building. Um, that's tough because you go on these cut runs, you never budget for it. We never budget for it as a club. The chairman never has, has any pressure on myself, the staff or players to ensure that there is a cut run. Um, but it does go some way to fill a void. There's a big black hole missing from the pandemic. The chairman was unbelievable in paying us all 100%. Not one of us had to beg for any money. He, he was loyal in his word and he paid every single member of staff, player, 100%. So it's nice now that we're getting the rewards of a, a 4,101 capacity against St. Albans, over 3,500 against ASU Wimbledon. It aids us, aids the chairman to go and put a little bit of money in the coffers. But I know the chairman would go and pay 150 grand off the bat to get us into the fourth round. I know how he's built. I've known him 16 years. We have an unbelievable relationship. I think he's an unreal human being, let alone a chairman. And I know how he is. I know how he's wired. So the money's great. The memories are better. And that's what I've always been instilled in me with him and this football club. And I just want to get into, into your head a bit now. Five minutes before you walk out there, you're in the changing rooms. What are you going to say to the boys to get them G'd up for the game? I'm not going to. I said it in an interview before, Mike. I don't need to. Because you're, you need your edge checked if you need a, a pep talk for tomorrow's game especially when you've got your friends and family in the crowd, you've got a bumper crowd at that, three and a half thousand tops, and the opportunity to go and create history. I don't think you need a pep talk. And I'll be very calm, collected, because they need to mirror me. We're not playing the occasion tomorrow, we're playing AFC Wimbledon in a cup game, it's that simple. We know where we're at, what we need to do, our match script is set, and the players will adhere to that as they have done all year. I know what this group's going to serve up tomorrow and I know full well that they're going to go and put their bodies on the line and they need to play at their maximum. There'll be no passengers tomorrow. There'll be no one being carried. Every single one of us is going to pull in the right, right direction and we're all going to go and try and achieve the ultimate game because we have it all to play for. And the final question I've got for you, you've talked about the occasion, you've talked about everything, but for you on a personal level, what does this game mean to you? It, it, it could have been anyone, Doncaster, Hull, Derby. Um, it's the third round of the cup. We've created a lot of history for this football club, going to Wembley, beating Blackpool, getting in the third round last year, getting in the third round again this year. I, 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 I put a lot of self-pressure on me. The chairman's unbelievable. He knows when to defuse that, when to pile it on. His management of me at the minute is frightening. It's unbelievable. And he knows when I need to kick up the bum. He knows when I need to be reined in. He knows when I need to be let go because I can go off the nail. But tomorrow, like I said, win the next game. I'm very boring with you, Mike. You always want to allude to other things. And that's not me putting you down, mate. That is me going, the biggest game of the season is tomorrow. But the biggest game of the season was last week against Barnet and the week before against Barnet. And then Woking on the 11th in the league. That's the mindset of his players. And they know the job in hand. They know exactly what it takes to go and deliver on a game plan. They've done it. We've done it. So tomorrow's great. The love affair is officially over from 1.30, 1.35 after I have the chats with some of their players. I know their players really well. I know their staff really well. But the job in hand is to go and get the win, to get into the fourth round. And we'll be doing everything in our power to, to ensure that that's the case. And finally, have you got a message for the Wood Army ahead of tomorrow's game? Yeah, be, be what you were uh, away to Barnet. Be loud and proud of this group of players and this club because what we've achieved together as a, a club, a town, a community is amazing. It's another memory that we can all have. I said it last year, I was gutted we didn't have the opportunity to have the time in the cup run together. Um, the win against St Albans was massive. This trumps, this trumps it. This takes it to another level. Trust me. It takes it to another level. So we need your support. We need you to influence it because you will 100% be the 12th man tomorrow.